Hey, it's Joe at Red's Fly Shop here. I am ridiculously excited about this setup. I've been working on this for about the last month, kind of tuning it and figuring it out, and I've just got this thing dialed. So what I've got here is I've got the Beulah Platinum G2 Euro Nymphing Rod, and it's the most powerful out of all the three-weight Euro Nymphing Rods we sell. And I've personally been fishing it quite a bit. It's our featured rod of the month for the October giveaway for 2022. And I've been streamer fishing with my Euro rods a lot. I really enjoy throwing little streamers on light rods and I've been having a great time doing it. But I found myself when I was fishing my, my little jig streamers on my Euro setup, really wanting to throw uh, some distance and throw a little longer cast than I can with my Euro rigs. And so what I came up with is I'm actually throwing uh, a little uh, Skagit head on this rod and I'm telling you, the thing just launches. Uh, I can throw little streamers all I want, and then there's a really quick process to convert my Skagit head to uh, a tight line Euro nymphing setup, so I can switch over really quick. So my routine might look something like this, and we'll dissect all the gear and how to set it up in a minute, but what I've been doing is I've been out and I'm swinging flies, I'm swinging my streamer, putting it out in the current, giving it a man, sink, 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 starts to swing and my personal preference is I have grown to enjoy wade fishing far more than a boat so I've been spending my personal time on foot. I can snap jig, I can jig it sideways, I can jig with my hands, I can do whatever I think is going to do to get fish and then simply just walk downstream and I can cast a snap tee, I can cast a snake roll. Um, obviously it takes some practice and some skill to get those types of casts to go but I can swing my way downstream, and if I'm getting fish, wonderful. That's great. I get to feel that nice grab. They're very aggressive sometimes. But if I'm not getting them on that fast-moving streamer or that, that slow swing, either way, I can try a couple different strategies. I can easily convert my Skagit streamer system to my traditional tight line Euro rig. So I'm going to break down the gear for you in a minute. Hopefully you kind of follow my strategy there where I can actually physically swing flies on my way down into a pool. Works great if I need to walk downstream. Then if I'm going to come back up, I would tight line Euro rig or I would just keep swinging all day if that's, uh, if that's what works. But this rod and this system that I, I built out here is just incredibly powerful. And uh, we'll try to make sure that you see some other videos or slow motion clips. But... I am not limited by casting distance uh, with this rod. Uh, the only thing I would be limited by is maybe fly size. I've got uh, a bugger called the Boo Face that will be listed in the video description here so you can see exactly what I'm throwing and I'll show you on video. I might be limited using a single hander on fly or streamer size. I'm not gonna be throwing any big number four Sculptzilla type patterns, but I'll certainly can throw a number eight, no problem. So let me unpack the gear here and show you how I have this set up. If you're interested in it, it's easy to set up on your own. All the parts are listed in the video description, but I personally had a ton of fun. And if you have any experience spay casting at all, you'll probably fall in love with the versatility of this system that I built right here. So part of the story here is the rod. Uh, this rod is really jumpy and responsive. That's the Beulah. Uh, 10 foot, 8 inch, 3 weight uh, Platinum G2 that we sell at Reds. And the reel I just put on here, um, Bobby in the shop suggested this because it's new, is the Lamson Guru HD5 Plus. So they just started making a smaller, more scaled down version that has a full cage and full containment for this skinny running line, which I'll share with you what I'm um what I've got going on there in just a minute. Again, all these products are linked in the, the video description there. So again, I really enjoy that spay fishing or Skagit style fishing, but I also want to run my Euro rod at times too, and this allows me to do both. So what I put on here is I've got a Rio Slick Shooter 25 pound little mono running line, and that stuff shoots like crazy. And for trout sized critters, the 25 pound running line is enough because my tippet size will always be so much lighter that I'll always break off in the tippet if I snag a big log or a big trout or something like that. On a salmon or steelhead setup, 25 would be too light because my tippet might be 20 pounds and I would risk breaking that if I were to snag up in the bottom of the river. So 
25 pound is okay for this light trout size stuff. So that's a mono running line. There's 115 feet of that on there. Now, for you spay fishermen, this is all old news. Um, but if you're kind of feeling your way into this, keep following along. At the end of that, I've tied a little double surgeon's loop. A perfection loop does not hold well in slick shooter. It's too slick. It just doesn't grip. And I've got my uh, OPST Commando 175 grain head on the end of that monofilament right there. Just loop to loop connection right there. And then this is this head is what makes that cast work. It's a little Skagit style head. And then loop to loop on the end of that, I've got a Rio Spay Versaliter 10 foot, four inch per second sink rate. I like the Versaliters versus like the light mo tips and things like that. On these lighter rigs, the Versaliters are better. Uh, out on the end of that, forgive me here, I have my entire line laying on the riverbank so that we could do this video as efficiently as possible. I've got a Buface streamer, also tagged in the video description. Great little spay streamer. Pick your favorite bugger. Tied on a non-slip mono loop on 3X fluorocarbon right there. And at the end of that Versaliter, again, we've got another loop-to-loop -loop connection. There's just a loop tied to the end of that Versaliter. So basically, I can just loop it on there. Uh, that's the basic setup. That's how we get that Skagit style presentation. If you're not currently into spay casting, maybe this is a good excuse to do it. Uh, most Euro rods will do this if they are in the four weight range. Uh, you could put 150 grain OPST Commando on most of the three weight Euro rods. I just don't know that the tips on all of them are going to handle the Skagit system the way this Beulah does. This Beulah just absolutely sends it. You do lose a little bit of sensitivity with the little itty bitty flies on the Beulah, but man, for controlling stone nymphs on a tight line, jig streamers on a tight line, streamer fishing and Skagit casting, that's a really tough rod to beat in that Euro category if you are an angler that's going to want to do that play that bigger fly game as well. So next I'm going to show you how to pull that Skagit off and then convert this rig to your tight line or Euro nymphing setup using this Rio Slick Shooter as your Euro line. Okay, so this is going to be really easy. I've got a loop tied in my uh, Rio Slick Shooter running line. I've got a loop in this OPST and I'm just going to unloop the loop connection this real quick and, uh, and wind it up. All right, so I just removed the Skagit head, and as long as, uh, let me show you this, the loop that you tie, and this loop is really easy, it's a little double surgeon's loop, okay? Very compact. As long as your fly will fit through there, I can take the sink tip and the shooting head and a leader all off in, in one chunk, and it's a good idea to keep a little bag, like a sandwich bag or a Ziploc, and put this in there. And no, I don't have any genius tips for how to keep that untangled. I've tried lots of different ways, but the head is only 12 feet long. The leader or the sink tip is 10 feet long. It's not a big deal. If you got to untangle it a little bit, it usually comes unraveled pretty quick. So now I'm just down to this right here, which is going to become the connection for my cider. And I will show you a really easy way just to do a quick conversion. This whole thing would just take five minutes tops if I were operating in real time. So I'll show you how to just loop the loop of cider in there that's already pre-tied really fast and get you right back on the water doing some, some tight line nymphing. So I took my Skagit head off. Let's just say I streamer fished my way down into a hole. Maybe I got some fish, maybe I didn't, but now I'm going to tight line nymph. And this is going to be my mono rig, basically. It's one contiguous piece of slick 25 pounds, super stiff line. It actually makes a great Euro line. Uh, again, it's tagged in the video description if you want to try that slick shooter. Mono in general is a little harder to handle. Um, so if you're, you're just breaking into Euro nymphing, I kind of like the FIPS line or the Rio Mono Technical Euro line. Some, some Euro specific actual lines are a little bit easier to make that transition, but great sensitivity and feel with this. So what I've got going here is I've got this big leader wallet and I, I shove a lot of old uh, Euro leaders and ciders and stuff back in here. And, uh, I've got one little one right here uh, that I've been using to plug in and it's really easy. It's just, I could tie this up pretty fast, but I knew I happened to have one in here that I was using the other day. 
and it's really just two or three feet of uh, of of one X uh, Rio cider material. Man, that stuff's stretchy. That helps protect your tippet. It's really easy. So now what I've got is I'm just gonna take. I took that Skagit head off. I don't even have to tie a knot, man. I just take this right here, and bada boom, bada bing. Now I've got everything but the tippet. And at the end, I've got a tippet ring and I left the tag on my clinch knot there so I can see the end. If you wanted to get fancy and make a few antennas and stuff, I do that sometimes, but I didn't on this one. I just want to be able to see the end. And now I can put four or five feet of fluorocarbon on the end. I'll go ahead and do that uh, now. And then I'll show you what the complete build out looks like. So I'm all switched over. As you can see, it went really fast. Um, <laughs> but essentially I've got uh, only about seven to eight feet. I'm not running an incredibly long leader. My goal is to keep this junction out my rod tip at all times. I don't wanna deal with any knots. I hate knots. I hate anything running through my guides that becomes a distraction. So I'll keep my, my cider at at least two feet long, maybe closer to three feet long in the event that I do want to bore down into some deeper holes. And then I've just got about four feet down to a stone fly here. Um, I've got like a jiggy pat on the bottom. It's a really good anchor fly for us out here on the Yakima and then a little mayfly tied off of a, a tag right there. And the, the Beulah out of all the rods just seems to move those bigger flies across the bottom better. I prefer the sensitivity for like the Thomas and Thomas and the Sage and some of the other rods for fishing exclusively little bugs. But if I'm gonna play this little jig streamer game or the Skagit game and spay, single hand spay cast with a little bit, the Beulah is a fabulous choice for that. So we'll go fish this a little bit and I'll kind of show you how the leader acts and, and how it fishes. All right, so I'm all switched up. I've got my cider plugged into the end of that slick shooter. It's now essentially I've got a seamless mono rig that is also my shooting line for my, my space setup. And it works great. I actually really do like the slick shooter. It's been a long time since I've tried a, a true mono running line like this. The only thing I'll warn you is it is going to have some memory in it. So go ahead and stretch it out a little bit um, when you get it off the reel. And then it gets nice and straight and you can really hold a nice line down to the fish. Regarding um, operating this Beulah with just a real light mono leader, uh, you're going to really have to eliminate slack in your cast. You're not going to have the weight of a fly line like a traditional rod to help load things up. I water load a lot of my casts where I just throw my nymph over there and then I can plop it right back up. And for me it works great, but a lot of people will, will get a little frustrated if they can't feel that rod load with mono. So just so you know, mono is a little bit, it's it's interesting in compared to like a traditional fly line, but the sensitivity for drifts and strikes and things is great. I really do like the rig. Uh, if you're trying to build this versatile Skagit slash Euro system, uh, it's a great combination. So easy to use, really happy with it. and. Uh, Having that cider in that slick shooter, just loop to loop right there, it does not add enough weight to really create a significant amount of sag. Really easy to handle. I can plug and play. If I decide I want to start spay fishing down here, it's really easy for me to just unloop this, roll it up, put it in my leader wallet, throw that Skagit system on, and then I can start just chucking streamers out to the middle of the river if that's what I desire doing. So. Um, Leave any questions you have in the comments and I will try to get back to all of them and then check out the products that I have listed in the video description as well.